Post Sledgehammer. Today, we're going to be doing a review on the Icon Tools 32 ounce ball peen dead blow hammer. I've had this sucker for about a month now. We're going to go through and show you how she's held up. My first impressions of this hammer, I was quite impressed. It's very, very similar to the snap on. Now, it is not a snap on ball peen dead blow hammer. I'm going to say that right now. The snap on is made in the USA. I'm not sure exactly where, but it is its own different tool versus this is made in Taiwan, but the similarities are striking. Now, this hammer is complete solid steel construction all the way down through the handle, through the shank, which I really appreciate. I'm not worried about the top of this blowing apart as I'm hitting on anything. It is a solid, stout little hammer. Uh, this is kind of like a plastic construction on the outside. Uh, rather, rather hard. Doesn't isn't too soft. The handle is a little soft for some comfort grip, which I appreciate that. You know, as you can tell, it's a little oily and greasy, but you know, I don't have any problem with slippage. I don't think I've ever had this hammer fly out of my hand for any reason from being covered in stuff. But uh, you know, I'm sure this handle will eventually start to wear down over time. Like I said, I've only had this sucker for about a month, but I have done everything I can to reach for this, even when I was thinking to myself, well, you know, I could just use this other hammer instead. I really wanted to put this thing through some stress tests and see how she held up and see if she was worth the hype. More on the hype side of things, this hammer only comes in at a price tag of 58 bucks, which, you know, working hand over fist, that definitely is a good little chunk of change, but you know, $58 versus a hundred and something for the snap-on, you know what? I've been impressed so far. Now, I'm somebody who likes to think that anything could be a hammer. Heck, my Milwaukee uh, 3 8 electric ratchet, I'd use that thing more as a hammer than I do my actual hammers at work. But uh, I've been kind of trying to not do that because I don't want to break that tool. And I've been reaching more for actual hammers such as this one. But let's take a look at that construction right there. Decent sized, not too small, not too big. I don't know if you can hear the steel shot on the inside, but she's a stout little, you know, heavy hammer. Not too bad at all. You know, it's good and tough. It'll put a good dent in something, but, you know, where I start to worry about this hammer is the plastic itself. I'm sure over time, a few missed blows onto whatever you're trying to hit, you're probably gonna start to chip away at this. You're probably chip away up there. Now, I don't know exactly how they have the steel shock contained in here. So Lord knows how long it's gonna take before I start seeing little BBs fly everywhere because you know I do have to keep in mind it is Harbor Freight. So it's not the greatest of qualities in the world. However, I have been impressed so far with what I have here. However, the nice thing is this sucker's lifetime warranty. So if I break it, bring it back, they'll replace it, no questions asked, completely free. Just cost me my time and my gas to go down over to Harbor Freight. Taking a look at the ball side of the hammer, she's seen definitely a good few whacks. I more go for this side than uh, say the peen side, just because, you know, like I said, I reach for this hammer more than I reach for my other hammers just because I wanted to put her through some trials and tribulations. But, you know, she's held up fine. This is some seriously stiff steel. I have not dealt with any kind of chipping, cracking, denting whatsoever. And then for the peen side, exactly the same. I know that's coming through pretty crappy quality, but I think you guys can get a good visual of that. Yeah, not too bad at all you know, kind of as expected. I did notice that they were very adamant about embossing their logo on both sides. So uh, I'm sure that's gonna chip away and rub away over time. As you can tell, there's some grease and oil has gotten stuck up into there. I know I've definitely used this hammer to free up uh, stuck fifth wheels on tractor, uh, tractor trucks as I've been working on them. So I'm sure that's some uh, fifth wheel grease that's worked, worked its way into the embossment there. Another thing I noticed is these uh, these holes, I'm guessing, for maybe the blow mold for this plastic. So I'm sure that those are gonna be weak points that are gonna find their way through in the future, but uh, only time will tell. Like I said, I've only had this hammer for a month and I've tried to use it as much as I possibly can just to see what it's all about. 
And honestly, for my money, I've been pretty impressed with what I've got. I've had no real crazy complaints about this hammer. Now on the side of chemical resistance for the plastic of this hammer and then also the comfort grip, which I'm sure is made out of some other kind of plastic or polymer, however you want to say it, I'm not a scientist. Uh, this hammer has been covered in diesel, brake clean, grease, uh, food grade lubricant, non-food grade lubricant, lithium grease, it, anything under the sun short of acetone, but well gasoline too, so I guess we can kind of argue that one. But regardless, I haven't really seen anything kind of start to melt off or dissolve or anything like that. Uh, I'm wearing gloves handling this because it's still greasy as all get up. But uh, yeah, everything is held up fine there. The only things that I've started to notice is this little seam seems to start get a little more prominent. But honestly, for a $58 hammer, that's a little disappointing, but is what it is there, especially on a lifetime warranty basis. So I'm curious to see if that's gonna start giving away in the near future. But chemical resistance, yeah, it's gotten greasy, it's gotten dirty but I haven't been worrying about anything really eating away at this hammer at all. Now let's get into the elephant in the room on this hammer. Do I think this is the snap-on killer? Because we all know Icon tries to rip off snap-on more than anything else. Is this thing, you know, apples to apples with the Icon uh, dead blow ball peen hammer? Is it apples to apples with that one? And I would say, no, it's not. It's definitely cheaper quality. It's a nice hammer for what I paid, but is this, you know, up to par with tool truck quality? Yeah, not really. I mean, there's definitely, it's hard to explain. It's when you grab it and you feel it, they don't feel exactly the same. I mean, they're similar, of course, they're, this is a almost a carbon copy clone, but I don't know, it, it's really hard to explain. If you got a snap-on dealer, hop on their truck, hold one of those hammers, and if you have a Harbor Freight nearby, grab one of these hammers, hold one of these hammers, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about there. Now, would I recommend this to somebody who can't afford the snap-on, can't afford the weekly payment, but can somehow afford the $58 right there on the spot, slash also, you know, you're a new tech, you're a new mechanic, and you're just trying to fill out the blanks and cover things until you can uh, buy the more expensive tools off the trucks later. Yeah, I'd highly recommend this thing. It's held up, it's done its job so far, and you know, I've been pretty impressed for what it is. Uh, that being said though, would I get the snap on later? Most likely. I mean, you know, if, if I get like a gift card or I get a little extra something something, I'll probably drop the money on the snap on because I mean, this is doing its job as it is right now. I've beaten the crap out of it. It's keeping it on going. So I, I like it, but it'd be nice to upgrade in the future. Lastly, if I was to give this hammer a score of one out of 10, one being the worst tool I've ever used, return it, get your money back, throw it in the garbage, and 10 being the best tool I've ever used, and I can't recommend it enough, I'd put this thing at a solid 9.5. I mean, this thing is awesome. It's, it's held up great. It's done awesome. I mean, I still have yet to break it and I use everything like a hammer. So an actual hammer itself, you know, I'm really putting full force on it, but yeah, this thing's been decent. I mean, I, like I said, I'll probably definitely upgrade to the snap on or, you know, it's equivalent through either Mac or Cornwell or Matco, depending on where I decide to uh, use my money at. But this is definitely filled in the blank for having a 32 ounce dead blow ball peen hammer. It's doing its job, it's holding up. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if I end up upgrading and then turn around and giving this over to a new tech starting with us just to, you know, give him a leg up in the competition because this has been a stout little solid hammer. And if you guys are looking into it, couldn't recommend it enough. It's a great hammer. It does have its shortfalls of quality and I could tell it's cheap, but for cheap, I'm pretty surprised that, you know, usually I say you get what you pay for. This thing's been pretty good for what I paid. Well, I just want to say thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope it was informative for you. Please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. Please like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you didn't like it. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you guys are thinking. 
If any of you are interested, I also do videos on my MR2 SW20 build series, as well as my Drift Miata build series, other tool reviews like this one, and a bunch of other automotive hunk and junk that I find myself doing. Thank you all so very much for watching. Y'all have a good one.